Welcome to the Cybersecurity Evaluation Tool, or CSET. This tool was developed by the United States Department of Homeland Security. It provides a systematic and repeatable process that allows critical infrastructure asset owners to assess and improve the cybersecurity posture of industrial control systems and information networks. In this tutorial, we will walk through each step of the process as if we were performing an assessment from scratch. Not all functions will be covered, but hopefully you will get a taste of how the system works. Start by forming a team of control system engineers, network administrators, IT specialists, cybersecurity staff, and managers. Open CSET, and you are ready to begin the assessment process. The welcome screen offers several options. Clicking the first button, Create a New Assessment, opens an important advisory. After reading it, you are taken to the Information screen where you can enter identifying information about the site being assessed and the assessment participants. This is the start of your assessment. The next option allows you to open the last assessment that you saved. Consider it a shortcut to your previous assessment file. The Open an Existing Assessment button allows you to open any saved assessment file. If the assessment was created in an earlier version of CSET, an upgrade wizard will automatically open. Files from older versions of CSET can be identified by the file extension ORXML. Current CSET file types are identified as .CSET. The Use Multiple Assessments option allows you to compare or merge multiple assessments or view trends from an established baseline and follow-on assessments. There is more information on how to use the Multiple Assessments interface later in this tutorial. The resource library contains a variety of standards, guides, reports, and templates related to cybersecurity. It will be discussed in more detail later. When you click the button to view the user guide, the system will open the document in PDF format. It contains support information about all aspects of using CSET. You can print this file or just review it on your computer. In addition to the user guide, CSET provides video tutorials and online context-specific help. To access the online help, simply click on the Help button represented by a question mark. Clicking this button opens the help system and displays help information related to your current system location, in this case, the welcome screen. The video tutorial screen provides links to all the available instructional videos. Like this one, they may be viewed in YouTube. The final button allows you to exit the application. You can also close CSET by clicking the Windows Close button in the upper right corner of the application window. Let's start a new assessment. We want to make sure we capture information about the assessment for both the reports and for future reference. We will enter the correct information into each field. However, we plan to come back and update the Executive Summary field after the assessment is complete. To navigate in CSET, we can either use the buttons at the top of the screen or the Next button on the bottom. We will click on the Next button to select our approach and standards. We aren't sure which option to choose, so we click on the question mark icon on the bar and review the help information. We also take a few minutes to watch the video. We are planning a NERC SIP assessment in several months, and at that time, we will come back and choose the standard requirements based approach. But today, we want a more robust and detailed assessment using straightforward language in the questions. So, we select the Questions-Based option. After clicking the Step 2 bar, we choose the Universal Questions and the NERC SIP standard. This gives us a comprehensive set of questions including everything found in the NERC standard. We then move to Step 3 to determine our Security Assurance Level, or SAL. The level is used to determine which questions are displayed in the question set. The lower SAL levels require less rigor for the organization. We consider using the general SAL, which is consequence-based.
However, we decide to use the NIST-based approach for determining our SAL. We understand the NIST process, and so we go directly to the information types and select the ones that apply to our facility. We finish the process by reviewing the final questions in Step 3. We have determined that the answers are no. Based on the NIST approach and preset values, we are moderate in all categories, and thus the overall SAL is moderate as well. We click OK and then move to the diagram. We close the symbols docking window and load the pre-installed PCS template. We could also have imported the diagram from the Microsoft Visio application. We then customize the diagram to reflect our facility and networks. When the diagram is complete, we check the basic network analysis and find some problem areas that will need to be addressed. With the standards selected and the diagram complete, we will now answer questions. Answering the questions will take several hours, so we plan our day accordingly. As a team, we review each question and determine if we are meeting the question's intent. Some questions we need more information on, and so we open the information window. We also notice that we can open the source document for a question and even find additional supporting reference files. For every question, we can add comments, mark it for later review, attach supporting documents, and enter an explanation for the questions marked as using an alternate approach, as shown here. Common questions for components can be answered as a group using default questions. However, an answer can be changed for a type or a single device. In our case, our DMZ database server is better protected than the others, and so we will mark it accordingly. Now that we have answered all the questions, we can check to see how we are doing. We notice in all areas that we are just above 40%. We can see how we scored broken out by both components and standards. We also notice our top areas of concern and where we need to focus our resources. To get even more detail, we click on the chart and drill down to see a new window. We then drill down again in a specific area to see how we answered each question. We can get additional detail in other areas as well, including a summary of results by component type. The final step is to print the reports. We review the results and update the executive summary and then select the report options. We choose the output format, which in our case is .docx, and print the reports. All the charts from the analysis screen and a list of missed questions in ranked order are included. With the report, we now know what we need to work on. Remember that the information in your assessment is both important and sensitive. Always store the reports and the assessment file in a secure location. To help us understand and resolve each concern, we go to the resource library to find a treasure trove of additional information. It contains a variety of documents, standards, white papers, and other guides to help you secure your systems. To access the resource library, click the button in the upper right corner of the main window. There are two ways to find information in the resource library. 
The first is to use the document tree. The second is to use the search feature. We will start with the document tree. The tree is divided into multiple categories. Choose the one related to your interest and open the subsections to find the document you want. We will open the NIST 853 document. The tool displays several pieces of information in addition to the document itself. The bolded first line is the title of the document. The second is a shortened name or acronym if there is one. The last block of text provides a short abstract or overview of what is in the document. To the right of the abstract is the Create button. This button will save the document file to a directory on your local machine or network. Let's go back to the tree structure. The bottom two headings are specific to the procurement language and the DHS Catalog of Recommendations documents. These are two of the most downloaded documents from the program and have been expanded into subjects by themselves. The Cybersecurity Procurement Language document provides a basis for the language, language guidance, the actual procurement language that you can copy and paste, factory acceptance test measures, site assurance test measures, maintenance guidance, dependencies, and references. We will now look at the Catalog of Recommendations. This document was originally designed for standards developers and includes requirements and controls for industrial control systems taken from a collection of major information and control system standards. It is organized in sections including an overview, the requirement, any supplemental guidance, and requirement enhancements, if any. The final section includes references to other standards or documents. We have been focusing on the document tree. Now we will review the Search tab. The process is pretty simple. Enter a text string, and the tool will return a list of documents that relate to that string. You can enter an exact word or phrase, or you can use wildcard characters. If you include the asterisk after the initial characters, then the search results will include topics that begin with those characters. For example, PROC with an asterisk will return document titles containing procedure and process. The double question marks can be used to replace unknown specific characters. We will enter personal security in the search box and click the magnifying glass. You can also press the keyboard Enter key. You will notice that the system returns entries in the following format. The title is shown as a hyperlink. The source is shown below the title. Possible sources include resource library documents, catalog of recommendations entries, or procurement language entries. The final block is the overview or abstract describing what is contained in the document. As you can see, our search returned a lot of documents. We can use the Search Filter Results option to refine our search. As an example, we'll select Catalog of Recommendations and click the magnifying glass. Our search results have now been reduced to only those originating from the catalog. The Resource Library provides invaluable information to help you understand requirements, develop security plans, purchase secure products, and understand how to protect your information and control systems. Before closing this tutorial, there is another feature we should introduce. It's the ability to work with multiple assessments. This feature is called Aggregation. By selecting Trend, you can examine several assessments of the same facility completed over a period of time. Compare lets you examine the assessments from several facilities. The Merge function allows you to combine several partial assessment files into a single complete assessment. We will look at each of these in more detail. First, add the files to be used. Simply click the Add Assessments button and select the desired files. The alias column is simply a short name used to identify the assessments in the analysis charts. The assessment labeled Default will be considered the primary or baseline assessment. 
Assessment compatibility refers to the percentage of similar standards and questions among the added assessments, not the consistency of the answers selected for the assessment questions. Clicking the Information tab allows you to add descriptive information about the aggregation. This information will be included in the Aggregation Analysis Reports. Select Trend when you have performed several assessments of the same facility over a period of time and want to examine changes to your security posture. Click the Summary Analytics tab to see the results. A printed report may also be created. Use the Compare function if, for example, your facility consists of several small sites that each have their own assessment. Comparing them allows you to see the strengths and weaknesses of each, as well as an overall compliance summary. The Merge feature should be used to combine several assessments into a single assessment. This feature would be helpful if your assessment team assigned groups of CSET questions to different team members. Each partial assessment file could be combined into a coherent whole for that facility. If some questions were left blank, or if the same question was answered differently in different assessments, the differences should be resolved before proceeding. To do this, go to the Merge Differences tab. The table shows those questions needing review. Simply click the answer you would like to use. To save time, the answers from the default assessments are preloaded into the table. Unlike Trend and Compare, Merge creates a new assessment file rather than a report. Once saved, it can be opened in CSET, modified, or used to generate reports just like any other assessment. This tutorial has provided a brief overview of the main features available in CSET. See the topic-specific tutorials or the user guide for more detailed information.